All right, so this is a Ruby Amethyst deck. I'm currently at 64 cards. I'm just gonna lay out my cards and kind of explain why they're in there. Uh, I was trying Befuddle tonight, running two Befuddles. Uh, underwhelming as far as I thought. Uh, I thought it would help with aggro matchups and it's inkable. So I've seen some lists with two. I don't know that it'll stand there. Uh, running two mirrors, I actually cut down from four mirrors. Um, it's a card you really want to draw because you're going to do a lot of inking and you're going to get a lot of value out of it, uh, but multiples of it are a little underwhelming. Uh, just added the Shield of Virtue. This is a must-have in this deck. I uh, don't need more than one out, so with the amount of cards you draw, I think you can get away with two. Uh, one Ursula's Cauldron, I am adding more of these. So this would be a few fuddles would go away. The Cauldron, I know it's not inkable, but at least one or two of these. Um, and these are still fine even in multiples, aren't they? Like yes. the other guys, you don't really want in multiples. You're fine with multiple cauldrons. Yeah, the cauldrons are really, really good. They help you get out of ink uh, or get ink and just filter. They're really, really good cards. Uh, I keep running this White Rabbit's Pocket rock Watch and it keeps not doing literally anything for me besides being turned into ink. So I don't know that I'm sold on that card yet. You'll see a lot of deck lists that have it. I don't see the value in that card yet. Um, on to the characters I'm running. I got four mini mouse because she doesn't die to fire the cannons. This could have been Olaf. Uh, it's my one drop. Not really much to say there. Split too many to Olaf. Show Frozen some love. There you go. <laughs> I, I'm on that. Yeah. Uh, obviously she's gonna kill the quick questing stuff, but she's not gonna fight your two twos very well. Yeah. But either way, um, three brooms. Uh, this is part of a Sorcerer Mickey package. Uh, if you get it going, it's super value. I find myself inking brooms a lot, but in situations where you can shuffle stuff back into your uh, deck, they're very good also. Uh, next, I go three of the, your little street rat Aladdins, or four of them, uh, lose Allure, uh, and that's what we shift the big Aladdin onto. I've seen deck lists cutting this Aladdin. I don't know if it's the right play. Uh, it also gets fires. If, and you're, if your opponent's playing still, it dies a lot. So most people know to kill that Aladdin. Uh, into friends on the other side. Four of those must have draw two cards. Um, I find myself more controlish, so I will use Aladdin uh, to sing. Friends on the other side don't care about his one quest, and then I will also use the next card to sing. Friends on the other side, the Maleficent that comes in and draws you a card. Four of that. Maleficent into friends is just a, a classic day one instantaneous. Just a million cards. It's so so strong. So good there. Um, Actually running two Zeus, this could be three. I don't know that I want four, but Zeus has been really good here instead of Rafiki. Yeah, I know a lot of people have been running Rafiki in this slot. How have you been feeling Zeus instead? Uh, Zeus has been a house. He comes in, uh, he does more damage. Uh, people, I find my, I find people like wanting to get rid of Zeus. Like they don't let him hang around. Yeah. And then if I'm not doing anything with him, he quests for two. So has that quest for two been relevant or is he mostly just crashing into stuff? Uh, mostly crashing into stuff. Uh, I'm getting a two to two for ones a lot of times. A couple of games where they just haven't been able to get rid of him or I've quested with him because I've got evasive or nothing I can do with him. He can at least at that point quest two. So he's been good. Uh, three Jetsums. This could be Goofy. This could be Pongo. Um, just an evasive. Just trying to weed out evasive creatures, have something to do against evasive creatures. Yeah, Pongo's a 3-2, so he dies to cannons a little easier, but he does quest for two. So it looks like you're valuing, especially with the mini choice, it looks like you're, where is your mini? Looks like you're valuing having stuff that doesn't auto-die to cannons as much. Seems like you're running into a lot of that. Right, for sure. And then I think Goofy is... Goofy, I think it's five mana. Five, five mana, but he's he quests, four, three or I, something? Yeah, something like that. He quests for two, though. Um. After Jetsum, uh, these are the two Mickeys that go with the three brooms. Um, Mickey's been good, I play him off and on. Uh, to be honest with you, I find myself with the way that I play this deck, inking these cards a lot, unless I'm really far ahead. I usually don't have time to play around with brooms and Mickey. Do you find that you're not like sitting in the tempo to be able to play with it? Or do you think that it's something to do with like two and three instead of I know a lot of us are playing four and four? Um, it could be two and three from that. Uh, four and four would probably make more sense to try and get the value. This value by itself in this deck with drawing all the cards and cycling through cards is definitely yeah. something we're looking into. Um, running three queens. This could probably be four queens. Uh, three is fine. You'll find that people actually do. If you don't mess with queen, I'm gonna draw a million cards off of this. 
So yeah, this is I never becoming, quest with her. I literally just draw cards. With this her. is quickly becoming a must-answer threat. I think in a lot of these grindier matchups. I mm -hmm. think that uh, myself included, when a lot of people first saw her, weren't super impressed. But she's not flashy. But oh boy, does she put in work. Yeah, and she goes uh, really deep if you play Cauldron, and then you have a shield out. Oh, yeah. um, this oh, deck used shield to have Lefu. So I used to have LeFou in here. The one-shot thing is not as big of a deal. This shield has been a lot better than just running LeFou. Running three Mauis now. It used to be four Mauis. Maui does have his places. Uh, he hits for a lot. Um, doesn't add any value and uh, can be inked. So um, he helps take out bigger creatures, uh, especially right on five. So you're on four, you can instantly attack. On five, I can instantly attack. Um, I think that's valuable because you're not hitting uh, your major board sweep until seven. So he's got to bridge the gap between basically five and seven. Um, there's your five dragon fires. They get rid of evasive creatures, um, bigger threats that you can't really attack into. That's a pretty standard. Uh, here's my one off Ursula. The only time I saw it tonight, I shifted it to the bottom of the deck. Thought it might have some value, but the more I look at it, it probably just needs to be something else. So, I think the fact this card is uninkable really drops a lot of its playability, in my yeah, opinion. I, I think I think I'm in a similar spot as well in my decks. Um, and then your be prepared. This is how you get back into games. So once you're in be prepared mana range, the rest of the deck kind of fills itself. Once you're hitting seven, eight, nine ink um, with as many cards as you're drawing, then everything else here makes a lot of sense. This Aladdin is a house. The lore swing, the four point lore swing when you challenge is amazing. Uh, I'm not finding that I get to shift him as much on the smaller Aladdins because they're dying, but even as a seven drop, he's perfectly fine. In my mind, I want him to work with this rabbit, the pocket watch back up here, but then you're like, the pocket watch had to be out. It was three man and ink it. I can't play him on seven and give him haste because it cost me another ink. He's still swinging on turn eight either way. So, yeah. Yeah, one of the kind of downsides, Aladdin is crazy powerful. I think basically every Ruby deck should be running him, but I know why a lot of uh, red decks are flexing over to Emerald is so that you can play the Ward Aladdin because even though it only has two health, it has Ward. So if you never quest it, it doesn't die as easy. Makes the shifting in the Aladdin a lot easier, especially in those steel matchup, this guy dies all the time. Yeah, for sure. Um, I would be wary to shift to Emerald personally uh, and lose Amethyst yeah. because of the card draw. But yeah, yeah. I think that I think that it's a completely different deck style than what you're going for. But that's one of the. I think Aladdin gets a lot better in those Emerald lists because it's more likely to be shifted down. Uh, yeah, I'm literally playing this deck because you just draw all the cards. Yeah. Uh, into four Elsas. Elsa's just ridiculous. She tempos people. You lock people out of games when you're trying to quest to back up. Uh, Brave little Taylor Mickey, questing for four and having evasive is always a house. And then at the top end, you got Maleficence. So when you've got four dragon fires, wipe the board here, and four Maleficence. You are running a lot of kind of expensive, uh, uninkable cards, like your dragon fires, Ursula's, four be prepared, four Elsa's. Are you running into any like bricking hands where you have a bunch of these high cost uninkable cards? You're running a decent amount of inkables, but a lot of your uninkables are really high mana, so you're not able to kind of commit them to the board early. Are you running into any problems with that? Um, I haven't run into any inkable problems yet, but Cards like this definitely help that. And I find myself, I don't have a problem inking Mickey's early, yeah, inking Maleficent's early, inking Aladdin's if you're not gonna use them. Uh, inking, I find myself inking Maui a lot. Yeah, I find that the way that this is playing now, I play from about turn three on. Yeah. Uh, key cards to have on turn three are basically these 12 cards here yeah. are super key that you're doing at least one of those things on turn three. It's probably why the White Rabbit's pocket watch, uh, pocket watch just keeps getting inked. Um, the turn, the four drops are fairly good, and then once you hit uh, critical like mass, it likes on. six and seven, and then yeah. upwards. Once you're at nine mana, yeah. Yeah, I'm noticing you're not playing any six drops, but if you're saying the three drops are so important, then you can basically just run out two three drops, which makes sense. Um, for, with any mulligan decisions in the early games, what cards do you find yourself bottoming a lot? And what cards do you find yourself trying to really dig for in the early in the, like so game, in, mini in the, game? In the early mini game, it's important for me to have any amount of card draw to start. I will bottom any non-inkable stuff, even if I have a be prepared in my hand. If I feel like it's gonna, I'm just never gonna get there, it's going to the, it's getting shuffled back in. Um, I really don't have an issue shipping any high casting cards. Um, if I've mulliganed and I'm left with this stuff, these will be the first things that I ink. Have you felt any like bad matchups where when you're sitting across the table, it feels like 
maybe it's not like unwinnable, uh, like you did go three zero. So clearly, all your matchups you found today were pretty winnable. But are there any matchups that you have found that are are harder to play and require you to play a little weirder so far? Uh, no, and I will say possibly because people getting used to the game, a lot of people will overextend and run into be prepared. I see a lot of them. So even as well. if you're at thirteen lore and you run everything out and you have one card in your hand and I'm still sitting on six cards and I be prepared. You just never recover from that. Yeah. The games that I did lose today were people that were holding back or had their own removal for my bigger threats mm -hmm. or they were running be prepared themselves. Yeah. I've been running into a lot where sure, I be prepared, but then I start to come up at the board and people can't deal with any of the bigger threats at all. Yeah. And then you you just lose from there. Yeah, a lot of these bigger cards uh, really go well, like one for one. Elsa is really good against other big threats. Same with Maleficent. Uh, have you found yourself, it seems like it's uh, at least a potential uh, weak point of the deck is if you use be prepared and the opponent's ready for it. If they play a bunch of small things, uh, it doesn't seem like you have a lot of answers to that outside of like a Maui or a Zeus that you've been holding on to the whole game. So what I have been doing, and because the deck is playing so much ink, I do find myself in where, let's say I have an Aladdin, they overload the board, where I can sing, be prepared. For sure. I do a lot of singing in this deck. Okay. Uh, and singing in to be prepared. For sure. And then playing a threat right after it. Yeah. I feel like if I can Aladdin, or even an Elsa, or any of these, and sing in to be prepared, then and you get extra value with the shield, but then I can be prepared and then I can yeah. follow it up with a queen or I can follow it up with some, even just a Maleficent here, draw a card. Um, yeah. I find that it's a little bit easier to stabilize. As far as other popular cards that people are playing in these colors, uh, the one thing that I'm seeing that's not really here is the one mana Maleficent. Have you felt any uh, like lack of pressure in the early game in certain matchups? I would actually put some stock into that. The only reason that I'm a little wary on the one mana Maleficent is she's just not, She's not inkable. Yeah, that's true. And you draw her late game, and to me, she's a dead card late yeah. game. Yeah, especially in this deck when you've got so much other heavy hitters in the late game. I, I agree. She's I, not very I could see. I could see if you wanted to aggressively mulligan and get her first game, or if someone's not playing any removal and you want to play that game. I don't think... I don't know. I, f I feel like the way that this deck plays for me is draw all the cards, control as much as you can, and then when they're basically down, then you can catch up on lore. I've caught up on many games uh, down 15, down 16 lore. Yeah. Um, there are games that you're just going to lose. You never get back. So the people that are playing smart are going to, you know, not allow, not, not quest all the time just to quest. They're going to, you know, hold stuff back. Um, only quest with evasive creatures. So I could see... Uh, playing a little bit of the early game might help. I'm afraid of the Melissa Maleficent because if I cut her in, I mean, what am I cutting? And That's then true, she doesn't yeah. ink. You're also already at 64 cards or 65 cards, right? Do you feel like do you feel the hit between 65 cards, or are you not feeling much of that inconsistency so far? You're still finding everything with all the card draw you've got. So this deck was 77 cards, yeah. and believe it or not, I had a ton more inkables, and I never had an issue. I could ink yeah. Pongo, I could ink Goofy, I could ink Tibbs, I could ink a lot of stuff for sure um it did make it harder to hit your other cards i'm finding even this thing at 64 cards in a grindy game i'm about three quarters through my deck by the time the game's over okay so sure. i've drawn more than enough cards anything with the queen in this yeah uh anything you know it's, it's the amount of card draw in this deck is ridiculous and i find that when i'm winning games it may be it is more of a control deck and it may be win more but i'm Questing for five, six, seven, eight a turn, yep. and then have like six cards in hand, and I'm not playing stuff just because there's no point. Yeah, don't need to, don't need to overextend it. Your opponents be prepared. Well, thank you so much for showing off the deck on the channel. Uh, we went 3-0 today at our local uh, Lorcana event. If you guys live in town or are swinging through Tucson, make sure to swing by for our Lorcana events. We have Lorcana tournaments every Wednesday at 6.30 and Sunday at 1 o'clock. If you go undefeated in the event and want to show off your deck, you're more than welcome to do that as well. We want to get lots of uh, real play content coming to you guys on the channel. Uh, keep your eyes here for more Lorcana and more other trading card game content coming your way. And with that, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.